Hi, and welcome to this section of the Differential Equations Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue learning how to solve certain types of differential equations that fall into certain classes. I told you that we were going to have different classes of equations and different solution techniques for those classes. And so here we're going to learn how to tackle first order uh, linear ordinary differential equations. That's a mouthful. First order differential equations. And we're going to use the method called variation of parameters. So it's another one of those methods that you're going to see in your book. It's going to look like a really lengthy and, and intricate solution process, but really once you do a few problems, uh, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Unfortunately, I can't really just dump you right into doing a lot of problems because I need to kind of outline what the method is in general and then we can tackle our problems. If we just dove right into a problem, then you'd be scratching your head the whole way saying, why is he doing this? Why is he doing this? So what we're going to do is I'm going to lay it out for you and then we're going to work our problems. The other thing I'm going to say is I'm not going to outline this solution method or any of these solution methods in this class with any kind of a proof. You see, these things are laid out in your book. They generally give you some sort of you know, proof associated with them or just at least a motivation. But rarely are you going to find a really detailed proof as to why any of these solution methods work. And that's because these solution techniques were developed over hundreds of years of study and calculus um, by some really, really smart people. And the proofs, the real proofs as to why these solution methods work are way beyond the scope of this class. So at some point in math, you're just going to have to read what's in the book and believe that someone else before you has proved it to, it to be true. Now, I'm not saying that we can't try to understand kind of why this works. I'm just saying that don't feel like you're going to understand exactly why all of these methods work here in the very beginning. You're just going to have to, to sort of, and I hate to say this, but you're going to have to sort of believe it and trust it. As you go deeper into your math studies, and of course you can, you can tackle that stuff and try to figure out the intricacies for yourself. One motivation for you, or one example is, back in Calculus 1, you learned that uh, the integral of 1 over x, you know, integral of 1 over x, uh, is the natural log of x. You know, you learned how to take simple integrals like that and integral of, you know, x cubed. You learned that, that was one-fourth uh, x to the fourth power, right? You learned that stuff. And they gave you a general motivation, but they didn't, uh, if I remember correctly, they didn't really give you a really detailed proof as to why that works. And that's, that's because, you know, the, the detailed proof of some of these things is something that's developed by mathematicians that came before us and so when they write these calculus books they don't want to present pages and pages of proofs for every little thing that you're going to use in calculus it's like f equals ma you're just going to have to, to believe that someone measured that force is equal to mass times acceleration you take some different masses you push them you're going to see that it obeys f equals ma you have to believe that take that knowledge and move on so that's a long-winded way of saying that these solution methods are the same thing. I'm going to list six or seven steps on the board. I'm going to tell you, do this, do this, do this, do this. And so will your book. But don't expect in this course to really understand the intricate reasons why all of that works because these solution methods were developed um, over time and the, the real proofs of them in general are not trivial. They're very lengthy. Once they're shown to be true, we take them and we use them. So this is variation of parameters. We're only going to talk about first order uh, linear equations. So let's write that down. Um, a first order a first order linear ordinary differential equation ODE is written like this. And this is just something that, uh, you know, it's a convention that we, if we can write an equation, a differential equation like this, then we say it's first order linear uh, ordinary differential equation. So that would look something like this. Some function of time, we call it a sub 1, some function of time, times the first derivative of x with respect to time, x is what we're trying to solve for in the end, x of t, plus some other function of time times x is equal to a pure function of time. You gotta learn how to read these things in your book. You look at this and you're like, well, what does this mean? All it means is, look, you got a derivative here and you've got an x here. And you've got some function of time here, a different function of time here, and a different function of time here. That's what the sub one means. It means this is some function of time, this is a different function of time, and this is yet another function of time. We just label them so that as we go through the solution method, I can refer back to different parts of the equation. You know which parts I'm talking about. So that's what it is. I mean, this is really not you know anything more complicated 